So a while back, I put up this uh, video uh, for plotting the Antlia constellation using Python, in which I plotted the Antlia constellation. This one in particular using Python, and in that I used uh, Matplotlib, Astropy, and all the other libraries. And for the most part, this is the code that. Uh, is responsible for doing all of that. So these are the star names that have the Bayer designation in the Antlia constellation. This is the right ascension declination of the Antlia constellation over here. And then what happened is that I made them into a list and then did a lot of thing with them and plotted them finally. So the final product was something like something like this. Uh, this was when I was like starting up with the constellation project that I am still uh, currently working on. However, a lot of things have changed, a lot of um, improvements have been made in the project and a lot of things are just not the same. So I wanted to give an update about that briefly. So if you come over here again, uh, we can see that we have right ascension and declination separated. And then for the star names, we have all these dollar signs and the usual latex symbols within the star name however if we increase the number of stars uh, as we do have a lot of stars in Andromeda constellation and Eridanus constellation so it would become very tedious to put all these dollar signs and all that stuff since the Wikipedia page doesn't give right ascension and declination in this manner uh, so we have uh, this was converted into the proper right ascension and declination value so I'll keep this screen as well uh, here so we can sort of make a comparison. This is the new script that I use for uh, making plots. This is the template of the script. So what we have here is that as usual we have the star names. However, instead of having the latex representations of the star name, I simply have a the position of the star and then the name of the star without the dollar sign, the backslash and the R. Uh, so we have alpha, delta, epsilon, zeta 1, zeta 2, eta, theta and iota stars. Then we have the coordinates of the Antlia constellation in an array in the right ascension and declination pair as we have taken from the Wikipedia. So you will notice over here, oops. that the coordinates are in R, R minutes and seconds and degree uh, minute and seconds. We also take the same over here, 10 degree, uh, 10 R, 27 minutes and 09.10313 seconds. However, in our previous script, I had to convert the coordinates first and then write the values over here, which is not an efficient process since we can make Python do that for us readily. So I have the coordinates of the alpha star over here and then we have the coordinates of delta and so on so forth epsilon, zeta 1, zeta 2, eta, theta and this one is finally for the iota. So each of these values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 represent the position of the coordinates uh, and to the corresponding uh, name of the star. So for the draw lines, this uh, what this does is that it stores the value of starting and ending point of a line that is to be drawn in the constellation. For example, the first coordinate point is 70. That means the line will be drawn from the iota star to the alpha star. And if we come over here, we can see that we have the first starting point as iota and then we have alpha. And then we go from alpha to epsilon, from 0 to epsilon, which is at the coordinate point 2. So we will put all of this in our function constellations that require the co coordinates of the constellation, the dictionary star names, then the constellation name, and then the short name. I will, dis uh, I will discuss it a little bit later. And then the line parameters. So let's jump into our constellation function. 
this is the main function that does all of the things required for plotting the constellation. So it reads the coordinates of the constellation, the star name dictionary, the constellation name, the short name, the line coordinates, and this turn half is a Boolean parameter that does something specific for some of the um, constellations. So the first thing that we do is over here, we replace the spaces in the constellation name with underscores. Then over here, we convert the right ascension and declination of from the hour minute second and degree minute seconds to degree decimal values using these functions that I have defined in another uh, script, the convergence script. This is the hour minute seconds to degree decimal. This is the degree, de degree minute seconds to degree decimal. And if you come down here, I have degree decimal to degree minute seconds as well. So once the right ascension and declination has been converted, what I do is that in the boundaries folder, I go and read the short name file for Antlia constellation that would be ANT. This file has the boundary coordinates uh, for the constellations that I downloaded from the IAU uh, website. So it goes in and reads the coordinates from here. This is the right ascension. This is the declination point for the boundary. And if we connect all of these points, it will give us a proper boundary that has been defined by IAU. Then I convert these values of boundaries uh, into coordinate points as well. And then I create a sky coordinate from the right ascension and declination that I have for the constellation. This is where the turn half parameter is used. So let's say we have a constellation that spans from that covers from last half of the right ascension circle, for example, from 270 to let's say plus 15 degrees right ascension. Uh, this is Andromeda in our case. Andromeda. Now, if you see over here, this is the 0 hour, this is the 1 hour, this is the 2 hour. However, this is uh, like coming from 11th to 12th hour over here. So if we convert this into degree decimal, this would be 15 degrees, this would be 30 degrees. However, this would be uh, like 275 or something degrees over here. So if you plot it without doing the sky coordinate rounding at 180 degrees, it will just make the constellations appear very bad when we will draw the figure. So we use this uh, turn half parameter only when we're dealing with the constellation that, stre that stretch across this 24 hour lines in both directions. And if this is not the case, then we have the parameter wrap at, at 360. Then we wrap our right ascension and declination at the given values. That depends on the uh, turn half parameter. And then this is the list of all the names that we got from here and we convert this over here into LaTeX designations. We plot here the right ascension and declination boundaries in these two lines. Then we use the draw line function to connect the stars in the constellation. Then we plot the right, then we plot the stars using the right ascension and declination. Uh, and then we put on their names. Then we do the constellation title, then the X label, the Y label, and this part right here is associated with the turn half uh, parameter. If the turn half parameter is true and it wraps the uh, plane around 180 degrees, then we have to change the, the tick points on the x axis as well. So, this is what handles that. And then we have the invert axis, tight values, safe figure, and close figure. If I now run this, Go over here. Now you can see we have the boundary 
of the Antlia constellation as well. And then we have the stars, they are a little bigger. And the figure is a bit different from the figure that we previously drawn. So this is uh, it for this short video on the update for the constellation project. Thank you for watching.